wear on their body. Wow. All right, we got ink coming, and we're going to have a trophy by the end of today. The only other meeting this year, Tennessee won it 90 to 80. That was back on February the 1st. And the jump ball, it's controlled by Tennessee. You'll notice on your screens at home, or wherever you may be watching, a decidedly orange flavor to Amelie Arena here in Tampa. Brandon Huntley Hatfield, his first shot, no good. Tipped back, and Chandler will fire at three. Halfway down and out, offensive rebound by the seven-footer Plavcic, and he had it ripped away by Wade Taylor. Aggie is so good at swarming the bigs in this tournament. Now, Taylor just forced a three, and that missed. Now the ball's on the floor, and it's again picked up by AM. Quentin Jackson in amongst the trees, and Plavcic denied it. Just rock solid defensive clubs in the finals, Ravi. They take your best player away, they try to take your best stuff away, and tremendous ball pressure by both the Vols and the Aggies. Six on the shot clock. Chandler pressuring Taylor. He's got to get rid of it with one. The shot goes up, and that one is off. That's Boots Radford has been shooting so well from three point land. Well, the Aggies shooting 51% from three in this building so far in the tournament. Chandler turns around, says, I'll shoot it, and he does. Kennedy Chandler puts the Volunteers up 3-0. Tremendous balance in Tennessee's offense between the three ball, the dry ball, and throwing it inside for post-ups. Another loose ball, and this is how this game's going to be. They like to muck it up, and Tennessee comes away with it. Abby, Tennessee was 13 for 15 at the rim the first time these two teams met. That size is a real question mark for the Aggies in this game. That yeah, is for sure. Tennessee shot almost 58%. Foul and a bucket. Josiah Jordan James. And the whistle against Quentin Jackson. And the pull-up game by Josiah Jordan James has been spot on, especially the last month. And his ability to one bounce into a high-release shot that Rick Barnes has taught from his days back at Texas. Those forwards and post players, so good, Rabbi, at the high extension, the flick of the wrist, and the finish. Unblockable. And the final step in Josiah Jordan James' development will be to get to the rim and dunk. You see his body. He is a great three-point shooter and a mid-range shooter, which we just saw. Tennessee's 11 points better per 100 possessions when Josiah Jordan James is on the floor. That's how valuable he is. Josiah Jordan James is guarding Radford. The best scorer for AM besides Radford has been Quentin Jackson. One on one here. James trying to hold his ground. Knocked it away. And another turnover. Terrific defense by the Vols. Yeah, the versatility of James, man. He can take your point guard out or your four guy. So good at physical body and clean hands as a defender. Wide open three. Bam. James knocks it down. Couldn't get a better start for Tennessee. They're up 9 nothing, And that leads to a Buzz Williams timeout. Early transition game. 30 and white makes the Aggies pay. Hassan Diara now in for AM. Five. He is a sophomore guard out of Queens, New York. This is the fourth game in four days for AM. And Buzz Williams will tell you, we've already taken our mandatory NCAA one day of rest off this week. We work every day, and we won't let it be a problem. Now, playing a game has been a reward for them. Hefner, no good on the three. Hayden Hefner had a good second half yesterday, but he misses there. And trying to add to a 9-0 lead. On the Hatfield kicks, James uses that head fake, and then he pulls up and is too strong with it. The way he's shooting, maybe you just take that three when you have it. Yeah. Diara kicks into the corner. That's off. And right now, AM is 0 for 5. Yeah, and they are 1 and done in that 0 for 5. That size of Tennessee, you talked about it yesterday, you can just overwhelm a lot of opponents. And the Chandler, that's no good, but Huntley Hatfield, an easy pick. And Vescovy, that was right on. He knocks down a three. You want to loosen up that Aggie defense, you start knocking down threes. You can squeeze them off with great success because a and they begin the game packing the paint, trying to shrink the court. After another kick, Gordon, another three, and another miss. 0 for 6, and down a dozen to start the SEC title game. And not even close to sniffing an offensive rebound yet 
is Texas A&M. Hartley Hatfield too strong. Tiara challenges and he bails himself out with a turnover. And right now, A&M is a little rattled to start here. Missing every shot, two turnovers. And down 12. Well, that was a quick 12 too, Jimmy. Uh, Josiah Jordan James is the voice and the heart and the tone of this club. He and Zakai Ziegler, they control it all. Huntley Hatfield with a tremendous height advantage over Boots Radford, so he backs in and uh, throws the turnaround jumper up that rattles around the rim and drops. Ravi, all the metrics out there, Ken Palms, stats by Will, my buddy back in Knoxville, Bart Torvik, says that Tennessee is the fifth best team in the country over the last month. They came out today so far and have backed that up. They lost to Kentucky, and since then they have gone 16 and 2. Another miss from Hefner inside rebound. Radford he'll try to hit one, and that's too strong. Wow, what a start! And there's that guard going up and getting that rebound. Kennedy Chandler talked about that at the top. They'll go in and amongst the trees. Extremely calm. Uh, the players were extremely calm and focused. Nobody seemed to be panicking. They were saying, look, we're okay. We got to make them guard us first of all. We got to rebound better and we got to settle the blank down. The players were looking around saying to each other, look, we know what this is. We know how to come back. We're playing this game to win. We've got to chip away possession by possession. Remember why we're here. We only have right now. And Buzz has gone to his zone defense now. And that frees up Josiah Jordan James. That's way off to the left. They haven't, they haven't trailed in this tournament. Uh, they want to get back in this ball game. They need to quit guarding themselves and start driving the ball. They've settled several of their first eight shots have been from the three ball. Yeah. And Texas A&M is a drive heavy team. That's how they've gotten to the championship game. A&M seen this act before. Auburn tried it against them with all those threes. And that's what killed the Tigers that day. That time Coleman takes it inside. And a&M's on the board to my point. I would have bet my house back in Arkansas that A&M was not going to shoot a three after that timeout John Fulkerson and Zakai Ziegler into the game as is Jonas Adu. We play inside out against this zone and Tennessee's got multiple guys that they can flash in there and they use multiple guys Well done yeah, really good and yeah. Adu has continued to develop that time. He used the left to go off the window Jonas Adu, a 6'11 freshman who goes 234 pounds. His career high is only five. That guy's going to be a superstar in a couple of years. Obaseki, good defense by James again. His hands have been very active on the defensive end. Bigger kick, James. Why not? A little too strong, but an offensive rebound by Fulkerson. And Tennessee's done a great job on the glass. Keep an eye on when Tennessee catches the ball, the distance of the closeout defender. If it's four feet or more, mm -hmm. Tennessee's shooting a blistering percentage from three. Tennessee's got an 11 5 advantage on the rebounds. That's going to be short, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. The zone may be a little disruptive right here for AM. It's a small sample size so far with they do but Tennessee is eight or nine points per 100 possessions better when he's on the floor And he got on the floor for defensive purposes against Oscar Shibway early But now his offense is starting to grow just adding to the complete package that Tennessee has to work with in that NCAA tournament Yeah, Victor Bailey checks into the game Josiah Jordan James takes a seat Waiting for Quentin Jackson. He's had some highlight plays for A&M during this tournament a big block from behind and some rim rattling dunks as well. That's him with the ball. He dishes to Coleman who powers inside and flips it up and in. Over Duke transfer now. Coleman's got four. Yeah, he's right at 70% on the year with shots around the rim. And I'll give that as a shot around the rim. He drops to 22% away from the rim. It's all set up by his drive game. Ziegler to Vescovy. Penetrates and a kick. Third one. Bailey. He comes in and that's no good. And we have time called here. It looks like a conversation between Terry Oglesby, Tony Whistle, actually. Well, there was there was no foul called initially, so you can't put a foul on someone. 
But Buzz Williams said, thought there was contact. Now, if the officials look at it, they come away with that's a cylinder play with the defender crowding that offensive player. So, no foul, play on. And it's the right call. Santiago Vescovi is chasing Quentin Jackson around. And Jackson is as fast as anybody out here. Vescovi is in as good a shape as anybody out here. And when your big can st step out and take on Quentin Jackson, you've got top level defense, and Tennessee does. That way, Taylor, no good. They keep struggling from the outside. Now 0 for 8 from three point land. This is Jackson. He's got Fulkerson on him, and he dribbles all the way to the baseline. Ten on the shot clock. Well, Vasecki forces one up, and it will not go, but he'll go to the free throw line. He muscled his way in and forced kind of a Chandler on the retreat. Yeah, you're going to have to play hard and compete if you're Texas A&M on the offensive end today because Tennessee doing a fantastic job of squaring up A&M, guarding the ball, ultimately taking away those clean threes. I said it the entire time yesterday when A&M's playing. If you can't guard the ball, you're in trouble. So far for Tennessee, so good. Yep. Well, the second knocks down the free throw. Buzz changes offense after that eight-game losing streak, and it's pretty simple. The ball goes to the right side of the floor. We're doing one thing. The ball goes to the left side. We're doing another. But it's all based upon all five guys can drive their matchup. Interchangeable parts. Play any position. Ethan Henderson, number 10, into the game. He's a senior forward out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Gets a little size in there to go with Coleman. The guy Ziegler will take one. High arcing, and that's too strong. Out of bounds, it'll be Tennessee basketball. Went off Wade Taylor. And just the effort, though, by Vescovy to come in and fly in. Tennessee, those small guards, man, with a tough nose mentality on both glasses. And m joined this conference 2012 and 13. This is the first SEC tournament meeting between Tennessee and AM. Good rip there by Jackson. He's on the floor, and he'll be helped up by his head coach. That ball went out of bounds, so it'll be Tennessee's with 15 on the clock. This is the third title game, Jimmy, for Tennessee. The last four times it was played. They were in the finals the last time the tournament was in Tampa. It has been a drought, right? 1979. Long time. Last yeah. time for Tennessee. Rick Barnes was his second year of coaching at, at Davidson as an assistant. One second. No, I don't know if he got it off. The A&M bench says he didn't. And that goes out of bounds. It's going to be Tennessee basketball. Boy, I'd love to see if Josiah Jordan-James got that shot off before the light went on and the buzzer went off. Tony Green has been doing this for a long time. He's getting an earful from Buzz. Uh, tournament record, right, in the SEC for Tony Green today? 73rd SEC tournament game, adding to his record. James will not take that. He'll penetrate baseline. That's too deep. And this is where Jackson shines with his speed, but that's what Ziegler's strength is, too. Speed, and he picked his pocket. Fulkerson. No good. And all of a sudden, Tennessee, after that red hot start, has gone a little cold. Buzz with a softball loft play call. Where's the ISO that he wants? Where's the mismatch? Can he find one? Where's the drive opportunity in this game right now for the Aggies? He is searching to find it. Coleman cuts in the lane. Misses that, follows it up, puts it back up and in. He's fouled. A three-point play perhaps coming for Henry Coleman. Such a workhorse. Henry Coleman only two rebounds the last time the Aggies played Tennessee. That's a season low. But he is a force around the rim. I mentioned the numbers are staggering. 70% as an offensive player at the rim. But his game completely changes six feet and away missed the free throw that foul was called against Santiago Vescovi Can you see right now offensively a little rough a little stagnant this zone has slowed him down and bothered the rhythm Vescovi misses that good box up by Quentin Jackson every time he has a chance he wants to push 
Came back for his senior year, and that's just a challenge of Fulkerson, and he bided him out of the way, and just like that, A&M is right back in this game. It's all set up off the drive ability of Texas A&M. Quentin Jackson, electric for a 6-5 guard, shooting 75% of his last six games from the guard spot. That is uncommon. Ziegler gets called for a travel. A whole bunch of hands try to pick that ball away, and he pirouetted into a travel. Watch Q Jackson right here works off that early ball screen in transition by Henderson and He is such a good finisher Ravi going either way with either hand with that long length reach to stay away from the shot blocker Third turnover for the Vols They've gone cold. They are 0 for their last eight To Marty's point and was not rattled at all yeah. with that 14-0 deficit to start with tremendous backbone from the Aggies Oh the Seki trap now and he's able to get out of it. Seven on the shot clock. Henderson kicks it. Taylor now is going to have to settle for a quick shot with two. One, that's going to be a shot clock violation. He lost track of time. How about the play by Ziegler? Understanding the short clock, he had time to go double team the ball and completely erase any drive opportunity. The only throw out was too long. And yeah, Tennessee right now with another top 10 defense would be the third under Rick Barnes. They had no top 10 defenses the 20 years prior to him being hired. Rick Barnes has a defensive coach on his team, a specialist, doesn't he? Yeah, Mike Schwartz is, as a head coach, you trust somebody, and Mike Schwartz right there, as good of a defensive mind as there is in the college game. Remember Mark Adams was that guy for Chris Beard at Texas Tech? He is the Mark Adams for Rick Barnes, ready for a head coaching job, around these guys all the time. He thinks it, he communicates. There's none better as a defensive-minded guy than the guy sitting to the left of Rick. One of the things you have to be careful with in defending A&M, and the reason they're taking a lot of threes because in this tournament they've made a lot of threes, more than half. They came in shooting 52%. They've made 25 of 48. And Radford's made a bunch of them, and that one is short as well. Boots Radford came in 10 of 12 from three in the tournament. And people will say A&M missing threes is tired legs. A&M will never say that, no matter what happens in this game. Kennedy Chandler so smooth, knocks down a three. Tennessee's first point since the 13-34 mark. I don't think we're going to get to a 90-80 game like no. we did in February. Uh, there's too much gumption on both ends of the floor. Hefner the drive and a foul really well done though by Hefner to attack a defensive closeout And he's coming out as a dart fast as a dart with no no if he can move a and m and as Joe Lenardi's bracketology has moved them from All the way out to now the last four in page and the last team in There's a risk here because while Joe is you know accurate beyond accurate I don't want to send in my application leave it up to the admissions office if they win today. It's an automatic bid Yeah, you learned that lesson several years ago the, the, the one We have to keep an eye on today is Richmond in the a10 But if I'm on that selection committee, I look at the wins Ravi of A&M against Arkansas at Alabama Auburn on a neutral floor Arkansas on a neutral floor there's teams on that list that don't have those four quality wins. I think the Aggies are in tremendous shape regardless. Good play out of break. That's Fulkerson who gets fouled. And the six-year senior will now go to the free throw line. Every Fulke lives off of an elbow touch and a drive. He is not a banger. He is a space, speed, fast guy at the four or five position that Rick Barnes has utilized time and time again in this league against guys like Oscar Shibway and other bigs they try to throw at him. Buzz Williams telling his team they're going to press, get back to zone. The press they feel like will save them five or so seconds on the shot clock, Jimmy. In the zone, they said they got to switch on ball screens, and once the ball gets to Tennessee's big at the free throw line, they have to match up. I will tell you guys, those young men still seem completely unfazed in that huddle. Absolutely. There, there's no go away in Texas A&M. And the Aggies have led this league in putting you in long defensive possessions about 18 seconds per trip now Hayden Hefner got caught with a ball in his hand doing too much dribbling and he Gets the offensive foul called against him. Ziegler stood there and stood his ground 
Square him up, guard the ball. And Zakai Ziegler just sitting on that elbow. And Rick Barnes is having not been to a practice in the last four years where Rick Barnes doesn't talk about we have to win the elbow spot on both ends of the floor. Ziegler just won it. For people who haven't seen Tennessee basketball or heard the stories, Zakai Ziegler's really become the face of this team with all the upperclassmen and Kennedy Chandler being the number one point guard recruit. It's Ziegler's team. Tell people why. Because of his toughness, because of his DNA, because of his resiliency, and his confidence in his voice. And that's rather those are uncommon qualities for a freshman. Fulkerson missed that, and the loose ball is out of bounds off AM. Ravi Zakai Ziegler, no, no one believed in this kid coming out of high school. He had limited options. There's no give up, and there's no stage too big for this kid. I am not bothered at all by the fact that Tennessee has freshman guards trying to win a national championship. They are mature beyond their years, especially the kid from New Jersey. The story, of course, Ziegler, his mom, the four-year-old nephew at home, their house burned down. They put up a GoFundMe page, and to the shock of Zakai Ziegler, between Tennessee and other SEC and other folks from around the country, Marty, they have raised over $360,000. Every time he clicked on the page, he said, it can't be real. I can't believe this is happening. It's just a beautiful story. It's a beautiful story of selflessness as Fulky dunks it from Ball Nation and from the SEC fan base. I talked to Zakai about this during shoot-around yesterday. He said, man, words cannot begin to describe what it meant to us. It was so emotional for my family. I was so thankful and so blessed that these folks had my back like that. He said every time he discusses it with his mom, she cries. He said, I had an idea that people were on my side, that they had my back. This was a crazy moment for us. And now the plan for Zakai's mother is to find a full-time residence in Knoxville. What a tremendous story and a tremendous blessing for that family. Second foul on Santiago Vescovi. The, the cool thing to me is how the SEC, the SEC family collectively has rallied around a Tennessee volunteer. And a freshman. He said, I knew there was love for me, but this is beyond what I would ever expect. And tip of the cast to the... As you said, Ball Nation, but all SEC programs have gotten involved. 24-12, winner gets the SEC championship, the automatic berth. Tennessee's currently sitting in most people's eyes on the three line, although I know you and others think they could be a two seed if they win this. A&M again right on that bubble. Rev, I don't think it's about Tennessee winning today. I think they already belong on the two line. Yeah. You compare their quad one wins and their overall resume to a team like Duke and Purdue. I mean, the, the non-conference schedule strength of Duke was 116. Purdue's was 228. Tennessee had a 16. And the number of wins that Tennessee has over teams like Arizona, Kentucky, Auburn, I, I really don't think it's comparable. They belong on the two seed right now. Tennessee staying away from the live ball turnovers in this game is a huge part of it. Yeah, there's the charge. Fulkerson left his feet. Isn't this amazing? You come and watch tournaments, and you get two games a day. Sometimes you get four games a day. Man, you leave your feet. You better look out what's below you. Touch somebody, and you're going to get called for a charge. And they're all accurate. But that is a risky play to get off your feet to make a pass or a drive. Yeah, Fulkerson, one bounce too deep. Mm -hmm. He still has not mastered that pull-up game, but... Such a severe drive threat, it's hard for him to get away from it. Quentin Jackson, he pulls up, and he's going to get fouled. Either Plavchich or Ziegler. Rick Barnes puts in a new out-of-bounds play because all the action looks like it's right here between these two screeners, but watch what happens ultimately. Fulkerson, bam, just a little slip. You get the attention going outside, and that's the sign of an older team. You can add a play in your SEC final event. And execute it to perfection. Foul is called against Uroš Plavčić. Here they have an enormous scoreboard high above center court and a video screen that would make anybody envious if you could get this somewhere in your property. <laughs> Jimmy's backyard, yeah. anywhere. On Jimmy's jet, that, that would be nice. <laughs> Are those in first class? <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the jet's big enough to hold this thing. We've, we've remodeled. <laughs> 
If he's flying a blimp around now, he's got a blimp too. He's added that to his mode of transportation. <laughs> Quick whistle there. Boots Radford against Fulkerson. For all the rhythm that Tennessee had in the beginning of the game, we've talked about what A&M wants to do under Buzz Williams, and they succeeded against Auburn and Arkansas and Florida. How do we how do we pig slop this thing up? How do we make this messy? <laughs> <laughs> I like your use of getting pig in the broadcast for me. Well, that's what Texas A&M is all about. They they do not embrace pretty at all. They they embrace ugly. They embrace grit. Good that hands. ball pressure can really cause you problems. They're staying intense with it. Really good hands, and Radford got oh. back too on defense to affect that. And there's Ziegler trying to go up for a rebound. And he picked up the foul, and that is going to send them down to the free throw line, shooting one on one. A hey, Tuesday, the NCAA men's basketball championship. It starts in Dayton. So Tuesday, everything gets underway. First four games on True TV. It starts at 6:30 Eastern time. For more information on the tournament game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Don't forget, of course, our bracket shows start at six. Feels like they run all night long. We'll be able to get all the breakdown, lowdown on the women's and men's tournaments. Henderson misses the one on one. The Aggies are 12 and 1 this year, Ravi, when they shoot 40% or higher from the three point line. 0 for 9 today. Not even close. Yep. They left Huntley Hatfield and he missed a bunny there. There's going to be a foul. I think Henderson's going to pick it up. But they went to that press trying to take some time off. And they broke it with Fulkerson and found Huntley Hatfield. It was an interesting story himself. He's just a young kid. He was one of the top prospects in the class of 2022, top five in the country, and reclassified to become eligible in 2021. And then when Olivier Humwa got hurt, it meant more playing time for a lot of guys, but Huntley Hatfield in particular. Well, Rick didn't just put him on the floor because of the injury. What he did about a practice a month ago. Rick Barnes told Huntley Hatfield, you got to learn how hard you have to play at this level. Now, if we got to go five small guards without Tom while we will, but his work ethic and his tenacity has grown from that conversation. And the size of Tennessee between he and Adu just can swallow you up. He's 6'10", yeah. 246. They're not tall. They're also wide. I saw your hand spread out like, yeah, say the word wide. I'm trying to help you. I got there. Bradford trying to get on track. So is Jackson a little bit. Taylor pushing his way in. High up off the iron and right into the hands of Josiah Jordan James. Tennessee's making life real difficult on AM. Ziegler blow by Alley Oop, a little too tall for Huntley Hatfield. Got a score right now for AM. Jackson blocked from James. Coleman there, and he lays it up and in. I say that because your half-court offense has been shut down by Tennessee. You get a live ball turnover. You've got to convert in this game to have a chance. Coleman has six to lead the way for A&M. No one else has more than three. Coleman has eight. Check that. He's got half their points. And Fulkerson the pull up around and out. And it is A&M basketball. Fulkerson had his paw on it. Bradford 0 for 3. All three of those attempts were from three-point land. Jackson pulls up. Too strong. A little rhythm right now from AM. Chandler, he's made a couple. Knocks yeah. down another one. Kennedy Chandler hot from the outside. His third three. He's got nine. That early transition ball screen by Tennessee can be lethal. They can set it facing the offensive player. They can butt screen it and switch it up. It's hard to handle, and Chandler's learning over the last month how to really be special off of it. Coleman, again, anytime the ball's on the floor, a Tennessee guard is there to knock it away. It was Chandler that time. Ziegler trying to force that one to James. Would have been better off pulling it back out. Taylor wide open. Coleman, and he's got 10. But to my point about AM, they understand they've got numbers. We got to go. And Buzz Williams, you can, you can see him go, man, go. We got the ball hanging in this ball game off of their defense just a little bit. Here's that three by Chandler. I'm talking. Oh, why aren't they number one seed? 
Seth, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm kind of baffled why all the projections right now are that they are a three seed. And you start looking at their strength of schedule and net and all the metrics compared to Duke and Purdue right now. They've, they've beaten Kentucky head to head, two to one. Three and one against Kentucky and Auburn. 16 and two since that Kentucky loss. And just watching them play, they look like what a one seed should look like on yeah. Selection Sunday. Uh, Huntley Hatfield, when he starts making that shot, he's going to be unstoppable, but he missed there. 27-18. A&M has taken nine threes. They haven't made one. But remember, seven of their first eight shots for the Aggies were from the three ball. Since that time, they've taken 13 twos and only two threes. Buzz Williams got control of his guys and said, we got to get back to who we are. And Boots Radford's having one of those days. Great dribble here by Kennedy Chandler. He's 0 for 4. Not a good pass by Forkerson. Otherwise, Ziegler would have had the baseline yeah. or a shot. And they pride themselves on perfect passing in their practices to set up those threes. That's better. Ziegler high arcing three off the front of the iron. And Radford rips it down. And Tennessee shooting 33% for the game. After starting out so hot. And Tennessee has guarded that ball. That time, Jimmy, you watch. Every time the ball goes on the floor, yep. there's a Tennessee yep. guard yeah. who deflects it. It's always Act being deflected. Active hands. And that time, Quentin Jackson wins his matchup. But he had to fight to get there. You don't want to foul the hard, bad shots of Texas A&M. Because they're going to take a fair share of them. And you had Quentin Jackson that time, Ravi, outside the lane, outside the pipe, taking a hard guarded two, and you compound the problem with a foul. And there's the resume that I think a lot of folks have missed on to Seth's point. All those numbers say a number one seed, and you've beaten Arizona, and you've beaten Auburn, and you've beaten Kentucky. Their non-conference strength of schedule, they did exactly what the selection committee asked you to do. Don't be surprised if Tennessee doesn't cut down the nets in here, and they pop on that one, on that one line. Later on this evening. So what do you get? Gonzaga, Arizona, Baylor, Kansas. Baylor, Kansas. If that's the way it shakes out, that's the way it shakes out. Reese, Seth, Alfonso, Jay Billis. Our coverage of court will start at 6. They've been on for most of the morning discussing all the scenarios, possibilities. Again, A&M currently one of the last four teams in, which is, as, as Seth knows very well, not a great place to exist on the day that oh. they're deciding. <laughs> rather not be there. Oh. Better to be there than other places, but you'd rather not be there. Now, what a tremendous ball coach Seth Greenberg was and still is if you wanted to do it. But he lived the life on the bubble for a long time. Now, James yeah. throws it up, soft touch there. So strong, isn't he? A physical four guy. When they slide him to the four, he's at the three right now. He is hard to guard. James has eight. Wow, Three look seconds, at that, Ravi. Two, there's that deflection. Got to shoot it. And he's off. But what a start for Tennessee here as they're one half towards the title. But when your five man can come out and take on a guard and get in the stands, but determined. You stay in front of the Aggies, you take away their three ball. Guys like Ziegler and Chandler and Vescovy have been spot on in that area. All right, we'll get Marty's thoughts. You got some time to spend with... Buzz Williams in just a second. 29-20. SEC tournament title on the line. It's Radford, who's been so good this week. Hasn't got on track. And there you go. That's how you start the second half with his first points and a drive to the hole. You try to lift the big if you're the Aggies and drive baseline. That's been their bread and butter of the last six or seven ball games. They get one to start the second half. Chandler had nine to lead the way. Josiah Jordan James had eight. They find Plapchitz. That's a good interior pass by Huntley Hatfield. Again, Tennessee was 13 out of 15 at the rim in game number one, and they're chasing that same high percentage so far in this one. Radford guarded by Vescovy, and he'll get it to Taylor. Taylor went 0 for 3 in the first half. Missed his two three-point shots. Spin move, and... A good take. Coleman can't get it to go in. And a loose ball to Josiah Jordan James. Two baseline drives, though, for Buzz's guys coming out of that halftime break. Vescovy got it. Where was the defense when he caught it? I think it was at that four-foot mark or beyond. And that's an open, clean three that Tennessee 
has just knocked the bottom out of him time and time again this year. Bradford hard to the hole, and he got fouled by Huntley Hadfield. Three for Vescovy gives him six, Marty. Guys, coming out of the locker room, I got to spend a few minutes with Buzz Williams. You can see right here, he's explaining to me what he is telling his team right before he came out to me. First of all, look, they missed 20 shots. They got eight back. When they miss, all five of my guys have to find their four and five, and they have to hit them. All of them. You cannot rebound the way we rebounded in the first half and win the game. Cannot do it. We have to be more physical. But he said, look, we're still fighting. I'm playing them all. We're running on fumes, but we ain't quitting. Yeah. Is there any symbolism in the fact that he kept tapping a brick wall like they were running into a brick yeah, wall? Yeah. This is Plovich, right? and this is Brandon <laughs> Huntley Hatfield. <laughs> and they bring Adu. He's this brick. Tennessee missed 20 shots to the point, and they got eight of them back. That's a high percentage at 40% range. You just can't beat a good team when you're giving up that much on the offensive glass. Layoff, Flapshit, that's smart. That allows Coleman to get back. In the meantime, Vescovy's 3 no good. Flapshit took a whack at it. Radford behind the back. Pretty play. And he stuffed himself with a basket. Now that's a bad pass, turnover, and a two-on-one. Jackson, he lays that up and in. Quentin Jackson, he's got seven. It is so important for the Aggies to score when they have the numbers. Yeah. You can see Buzz Williams. Every time there's a turnover, man, it is all gas, no breaks in his mind, and his players executing as well. And Chandler had a terrific shooting first half. Three threes. Play through Huntley Hatfield that throws one up. That's no good. And it's to AM. Huntley Hatfield's coming out. That's not the shot that Rick Barnes wanted. Fulkerson checking in the next dead ball. Bradford, uh oh. Bradford's got five here in the second half. His first three goes down. Bradford, because it was a questionable shot selection by Tennessee on that last possession, it's like a live ball turnover. Yeah. And Texas AM quick with their transition. Plavchich doubled. The problem is Taylor, and that ball finally came down. Plavchich keeps it up, and he finally brought it down to where Taylor could get it, and we have a foul. Tomorrow, SEC Network, the ESPN app. Two-hour SEC Now selection special. Break down the men's and women's brackets and preview all the games the SEC teams are playing in. Along those lines, we got a chance to spend some time with the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, Greg Sankey, and what a... Fantastic job he's done. Anybody thinks that he doesn't look years ahead about some of the things that are on the horizon for the conference and whether it's NIL, you're going to have three new coaches in the conference. This conference is buttoned up thanks to that man right there with the blue and the yellow tie, the gold tie. He's the leader of great leaders in college sports right now. He's the voice and the vibe that drives so many things. He tweeted earlier today, Ravi. Two years ago, when the world shut down, he made notes in Bridgestone Arena. And the notes were, we have to care for our student athletes. That's the first thing he wrote down when the pandemic shut things down. It just speaks to the vibe and the, the heart that he operates with. He told all of his ADs and coaches shortly after the pandemic, the SEC, SEC is going to stand for support, educate, and care for our student athletes. We're going to compete. We're going to win championships, but we don't win championships. We're going to support, educate, and care. And, man, they have done it as well as any league in the country led by his leadership. Plavchik picks up his third. He comes out. Tennessee goes smaller now with Vescovy, Chandler, and Ziegler on the floor. Chandler's three was his fourth of the game. All of his points have come from three-point land. He's got 12. Special teams. Can you hit something right now if you're buzz off of it? Strong take, contact, but straight up, and then the turnover from Tennessee. Yeah, Fulkerson's mastered the going straight up, not putting yeah. the arms down. Buzz Williams frustrated at no call on Radford. But you got to stay after it if you're in in. You've got to get points to that free throw line. 17, 18 points is their magic number. And they are at 10 right now, are the Aggies. 16 to 12 points in the paint favoring Texas A&M. 
Screen the screener and set up the drive. Well, Maseki threw that one up, and it was Fulkerson again with a good defense. Coleman fights for it. It'll be Tennessee basketball. The best five teams, Ravi, over the last 10 or 11 games in the country. If you just go by analytics and metrics, Gonzaga, Iowa, Kansas, Tennessee, and Texas Tech. Uh -huh. That's how good these guys in white have been in the month of February and early March. Good as Iowa been lately. Oh, tremendous. Good. Yeah, we're not talking nearly enough about them on a national level. Chandler skip pass, Vescovy in the corner, and that's going to be three free throws. Good look from Kennedy Chandler. Trying to add to his assist total, he's doing plenty with Texas A&M is in really good position and Joe Lenardi starting to back it up as well. They have slid up to Texas A&M within the last 90 minutes. Yeah, next four out, first four out, last four in, and now not even on the bottom of that. So that's real good news for Texas A&M. I was texting with Joe during the uh, halftime with regards to Tennessee. His response, nowhere near a one. With all due respect to you and Seth. Could realistically pass Duke or Purdue, but he'd be shocked if they drop Duke and dropping Purdue would require a whole new bracket So he, he doesn't make in his mind and maybe the committees a huge distinction between two and three Try to sell that to coaches. I'm just saying I know I'm just saying that coaches that have been in the tournament and They've been in that one two or three position. There's a major difference when you get to that second weekend between a two and three seed. Oh, Vescovy came in front and picked off that pass Andre Gordon turned it over. Vescovy looked like a free safety who got a good read on a ball. And now he'll try to bury a three. And he does. Santiago Vescovy, defense and offense. And the lead grows to 14. And Buzz Williams almost ran into his own ball dribbler, Hassan Dier, to call a timeout. Huddle oh, crash. <laughs> What do you find out there? That is intensity <laughs> personified right there, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what I learned. As Tennessee players made their way to the bench, Rick Barnes looked at them and said, that's who we are. Defense to offense, turn it up. John Fulkerson then said, turn it up, do not stop. And Kennedy Chandler said, we cannot let up right now. This one's ours. The same look I have when my wife Tiffany says, James Joseph, get in here. <laughs> you put your hands to your ear too both of them. I bet <laughs> Lean in. Yes. Yes, dear <laughs> Marty has worked man He has worked great stuff Marty Ziegler with the foul Coleman with the free throw McBarnes has also let his team know for as long as he's been coaching and the number of places he's been, whether it's Providence or Texas, here in Tennessee, he believes this is a national championship team. And he said that to him in a recent meeting. Well, they still have work to do. I know they're playing at a high level. It's hard to kill the will of this Texas A&M team. Fulkerson, nope, Hefner got a hand on it, and now Chandler with the advantage. Vescovy steps to his right, buries yeah. a three. Santiago Vescovy now to 15 points with his fourth three of the game. How about the shot fake and the sidestep of yep. Vescovy to not feel the shot clock pressure to affect his rhythm? That is some beautiful stuff offensively. 15 point lead. It's the largest of the game for Tennessee. Coleman. Barrels in James blocked it with his elbow 27 points a day for Chandler and Vescovy combined watch his shot fake sells it just enough the sidestep the shot clocks winding down But Vescovy feels no pressure of it. They have all the pieces man to cut down the nets in New Orleans The two of them just four fewer points than A&M Hefner bad pass turnover A&M and it's starting to come apart just to pay off the Santiago Vescovy, he could run a marathon or be in the Olympics. So they put little chips in the players' pants during practice, and it has shown that Vescovy has run over 500 miles during practice. And the coaching staff will tell you that's about 100 miles more than anybody else on the team. This year. This year. Wow. Doesn't stop. 
And we saw that on that last interception, and then he with that three-pointer just keeps going. Here he goes again to the baseline. Chandler, oh, can't get it to go. That would have been pretty. You've got to cut the backside of a defense that loads to the ball like Texas A&M does. Got everything but the make. Quentin Jackson may have to take over this game. Taylor draws contact, throws it up, no foul. Kai Ziegler in a tight game late. He's the guy they want the ball to be in the hands of a terrific free throw shooter. One thing about as you look ahead, Vescovi, Ziegler, late game, unbelievable accuracy from the strike. Yeah, as good a closer as, as we have in college ball. And there's that bulky spin you, drive you, fallible game that he has. As Fulkerson gets set to take the two free throws, we remind everybody later on CBS, the exclusive bracket reveal of the matchups for the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship during their annual selection show, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Of course, CBS. And then you get everybody breaking it down on ESPN. Ravi, John Fulkerson had 24 and 10 against Arizona. And Coloco and that front line is as good as there is in college ball, and he had his way with them the depth of Tennessee is probably undervalued and understated well, he's such non-traditional big man like yeah. he do anything they go back to the basket back you down Taylor pull up three knocks that down right in front of Buzz Williams that'll get him going that's only their second three-point make though they've got to get to eight or nine to have a chance in this game Within 11, Ziegler sees Chandler go to the corner, then he dumps it to Fulkerson, who drops it for James. Such clean basketball by Tennessee, playing clean in a crowd. Not easy to do. Taylor, oh, did he get away with an extra step or what? 49-38. Tennessee has 15 assists, Jimmy, on their 17 made field goals. That's about moving it. That's who they are. That's who they've been all year. The common thread in their offense is beautiful ball movement. They didn't get it this time, but on the previous possession, Ravi playing clean in a crowd. You can't do it any better than what Tennessee did. Ten turnovers for Tennessee, and we're not yet at the 12-minute mark, 12.05. We talked yet about Tennessee's ability to get the ball to the third side of the floor. They get you chasing, they get you in a rotation, and then that passing stays hot. And that's why they've had such a high assist rate all year. Keep an eye on Wade Taylor. He's got seven. The last seven for AM. He's open again, and he will fire a three, and that one's no good. Cash keeps it alive. Hassan Diara, good dish, good block. Josiah Jordan James, has he been outstanding defensively? Just went and ate it up, didn't he, as a recovery defender? Man, that is special. Ziegler, got it! Right in front of the bench, high arcing three, Zakai Ziegler. His first points of the day. Jackson needs it, and that's way short and way off. And Quentin Jackson, maybe he's feeling it a little bit. Two of six on the afternoon. Again, fourth consecutive day that the Aggies have played high-intensity basketball. James Gordon on him, got him in the air, got another in the air, and found Plavchich underneath, who was tackled by Wade Taylor. He will shoot too. Ravi Tennessee rocks a little jammed up in there, don't they? You gotta zoom in, zoom out. But it's okay. Oh, you can do it. You're tech savvy like me, it's not an issue. You find the plug? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Here's Uros Plavcic. So 10:47, Jimmy. Half a half to go. Is there a 14-point comeback in A&M against this team? The transition game off their defense has to escalate. In the first matchup, the Aggies had 29 points off of their defense. They have seven today, and that's a big gap to overcome. Tennessee doesn't turn that ball over that three guard lineup, so you can't get those run outs. Right. Look at that quick yeah, double physical. from Plavchich. Jackson launches. That's no good. He continues to struggle. And I would say, and it's understandable, but for the first time in four days, their legs do look a little tired. Well, I think that's why you're seeing a lot of those threes come up short. Now, they will never nope. go there nope. after the game. It's just not part of their fabric. It's not who they are. And I love that about the Aggies. James will launch. That's good. And they do have the legs. And they are burying threes. Now 50%, 11 of 22. It's been Chandler, Vescovy, and James. They may not be a one seed, but no one looks more like a one seed on Selection Sunday than Tennessee right now. All right, Radford, he hammers down one of his own. Boots Radford's second of the day. He had 10 coming in in the prior three games. Now it's down to 15 points, and, and Texas A&M, we know how hard they can guard. Can they get back-to-back -back stops and put some more game pressure on? Plavchich, easy pickings right there, and they will slow it down. Now they normally go to floppy action. You can see those two big set screens, let those guards work off of it. There it is. James again. Rotation was terrific. It was down and out. Tennessee has good three-point shooters. That is not, like Auburn, that's not their DNA to shoot a lot of threes. But Kentucky, Kentucky doesn't rely on a three-ball either. Yeah, they did yesterday, and they they knocked them out of the first today. It'll be interesting to see, Jimmy, we'll get some numbers. The losing teams in all these games, what their percentage was from three-point land. A lot of it's tied to how good is your shot selection from the three-point land. And Tennessee, Rabbit, they come in making nine a game. That's a, that's a high number at 35% leads the SEC. And then they can post you, they can drive you, they can get to the foul line, and they can knock down threes. And their defense is non-negotiable game to game. Jackson backs in. Really difficult fadeaway shot. Quentin Jackson is two of eight today. Look out. They're going to call that on Fulkerson. <laughs> Crowd didn't like it, but Terry Oglesby was emphatic in his decision. Well, that's that early butt screen that Rick Barnes uses in his transition game. Folky running up the floor. I haven't got a look at it yet again, but Folky's advancing up the floor. Ten and White. He stops right there. That's a confusing call, I'm sure, to, to Vol Nation. Taylor, left hand, too much spin on it and too hard off the backboard. 15 points and a minute off the clock from the last time. It was 15 and we checked. James, good pass down low. Fulkerson, no, he's too strong with it. And Radford, here's that transition. They're trying to get some buckets. That feels like a big miss by Tennessee. a and has to capitalize on it right now. Give credit to the Vols defense when they got back in a hurry and a charge on Taylor. It's his third. AM was trying to attack the first side of the defense against Tennessee, and it's not going to happen. They are too well built on that end of the floor. team that lost eight in a row the longest in their program history since 2004 now one of the first four teams or last four to get into the tournament according to Joe Lenardi Vescovi Chandler always on the move and he will kick to James who will launch again Josiah Jordan James he hit four in a row in a game earlier this week and James continues to shoot lights out.
18 point lead. Radford just ran into that wall again. Cash can't get it to go. Tries again and finally puts it up and in. This is the player that Tennessee had thought they were getting all along in James. He's really added an offensive game to what was an outstanding defensive game, a leadership game. His shot has improved, and he's so much more confident. He'll do it again. Too strong that time. And it'll go to A&M. Figure a guy with the name Josiah Jordan. Tigers team starting to play their best basketball of the year. Carl. It'll be a pick of a lot of folks out there. Memphis to do some damage in the NCAA tournament, and then perhaps after this SEC tournament. A lot of folks will jump on the Vol bandwagon. They lead at 59, 43, 639 to go. And it will stay AM basketball. Ravi coaches that have played against Davidson this year, the common thread is that is the most physical offensive team that they faced all year. And they are going to be hard to handle in that NCAA tournament. They don't look physical, but you match them up and start playing against them. Man, their screens, their cuts, how they own their spot. They are a problem on offense. Aiden Hefner out of Needleton, Texas, dribbling too much and ate him up. Him. Yeah, he did. Ate him up. Chandler and Ziegler have been a big problem for him. 12 turnover in the game for AM. Starting to get into that point in this game. Six minutes to go, 16 points. They go floppy again. And a little different look. They go floppy into an elbow touch. An elbow pop by James. Mescovy dumps it off, and Fulkerson with a big time flush. How many times has a Tennessee ball left their feet to pass in the paint only to find a cutter for a dunk? Contact, no foul on the ground is AM, and it's volunteer basketball. And now you can start to feel the celebration starting to begin with the folks clad in orange here today. I'm pretty sure Fulkerson is either 40 or 41 years of age at this point, but he still has some pop, right? He's got some juice. Wow. That was electric. As high as he's been. James, no, but a Tennessee offensive rebound. 18 assists today for Tennessee on their 21 makes. Am I reading that right? 19, 19 assists. Yep. That, that sums them up. Yep. They go down a little loose with it. He cannot drive the ball all game long. There's one as I say it, but that's been very rare to drive the ball. Delete the drive. Tennessee has thrived on it in this game. Vols will take a timeout. 61-43. Vols getting closer to their first title since 1979-45. As a puncher's chance against anybody, they put it on Arizona, who a lot of folks think are the best team in college ball right now. Big Blue Nation wasn't great yesterday, but when they're at their best, they can cut down the nets as well. And don't sleep on Arkansas. I know they didn't show up well yesterday. On a neutral floor, Wu Pig is going to be just fine. Defense that screws to get yes. tightened by the teams in this conference. Let's see how LSU does, obviously, in the tournament, dealing with the uh, Will Wade firing. We have three new coaches in the conference next year. Kick pass, Vescovy. Always ready to shoot when he gets it, and he comes up short there. Have we seen a three point shooter for Tennessee today, Ravi, have to reach for the ball outside of their shot pocket? We have not. It's always right on purpose and on point. And there have been so few uncontested shots for Texas A&M. Buzz Williams imploring his team last 345 here. We dig down for whatever is left. Let's 
to be on the curl. Fulkerson will not shoot that in front of the crowd wanting him to do. He, he likes it better down here. Bradford and Coleman, the only two Aggie players in double figures. That is a three, and it's good for Boots Radford. Tennessee tried it, and they did a good job of icing the side ball screen, but then once the ice action broke away, they left Radford untagged. Under three to go in this one. Rick Barnes still coaching his team. Spite of the 13-point lead. Eight on the shot clock. Four percent spinning. That's an air ball. And a run out here, Radford. And he will instead pull up for a three and cannot get it to go. Would have brought him within 10. How about the effort of Fulkerson? He misses the layup, but he sprints his guts out with volunteer orange juice to get there to clean up the miss. Got to be Chandler had three Aggies on him. And the pressure will be a foul on Hassan Diera. And we'll take a timeout. When we come back, We'll get into Jimmy's different modes of transportation <laughs> around Tampa. <laughs> Restaurants, bothering right, people. Right there. There you go. Yep. Just making a little extra change in, in the off hours. Doing backflips on that thing. And as Vescovy gets fouled, showing the jet ski, does speak to the people that we don't get to see at home, but behind the scenes, and what a crew we have had all year on the SEC, headed by Mike Schiffman and Dave Seisler, and, of course, in the truck. Our director, Derek Mobley, Scott Matthews, who puts up with all these creative genius thoughts that we have and then actually makes them somewhat worthwhile and it works. And then for anybody that has covered basketball at ESPN, any conference in front of and behind the cameras, the season started two years ago, the pandemic, and this year, especially at this time in front of these packed houses, it finally feels like things have returned to a place where we're all at least relatively comfortable with it. Massive substitutions, Marty, for A&M. Extremely well stated on our crew. They're the best in the world, Ravi. But I will tell you, I'm so full of gratitude above all that they just put that Jimmy Jet Ski graphic <laughs> on the television screen because now I am no longer the creepiest thing that was on this broadcast today. <laughs> you mean listening, listening <laughs> to the huddle? The, the, there's an NIL deal waiting for me when I get home to Arkansas from some jet ski company. Oh, without question. Right? Keep fishing. <laughs> so, this is going to be the first SEC tournament title for Tennessee since 79. We talked about where Rick Barnes was the second year at Davidson. But the cupboard is full for Barnes moving forward with their ability to play defense, to go big, to go small. He last won a conference championship with Providence in 1994. Surprised me, I, forgot, I thought he would have won one with Texas. But he didn't, and the shot missed, and now Ball Nation to its feet here in Tampa. You fill out your bracket over the next 24, 48 hours, have confidence in moving Tennessee all the way to New Orleans. They have all the ingredients you're looking for. They're not going to be out coached. They're not going to be outsized. The speed can match anyone in the game. They can play different styles. And that number three defense in Ken Palm is not going to go away. They're still hungry. Josiah Jordan James goes down. Questions that they ask, how they communicate, the resiliency. There's no silliness in this squad whatsoever right now. And those two freshman guards have flip this program from last year to this year. They're the real deal. When you think about it, when you start to first see these guys in November and then December, January, what the biggest difference is, who's the, who's taking the biggest jumps? Chandler is on that list, especially on the defensive side. Well, he was a ball watcher, and Rick Barnes sat him down and had grown man conversations with him, and as a result, he's got a point guard good enough to cut down the nets, and he knows it. Here's what I want you to know. We've beaten two top five teams. We are a national championship yeah. contender. Yes, I'm telling you. Yes, you better know that. Yes,
Huh? Push some pee, baby. Yeah, push and pee things become something very real. It's been on the internet. You know, the rapper Gunna, that was his title song, and it allegedly, according to Barnes, who was informed by folks, it has to do with a positive phrase about being real with someone, and this is a team that has to be real with each other. He demands that. If you have to ask what push and pee means, you're not pushing pee. And Rick Barnes is a guy that's such a great communicator all the way through. He changed who he was as a coach. I mean, God grabbed a hold of his life back at Texas and completely changed how he coaches, but the fabric of who he is, the backbone of what he stands for, is the real deal. His faith was authentic to him, and his guys responded at hard, tough love coaching. And looking at a potential national champion finishing off this game. Now Chandler lays it up and lays it in. He'll get fouled. A little flex for the volunteer crowd here. The two biggest stories to come out of this tournament, A&M uh -huh. working its way into the NCAA tournament, yes. and Tennessee reminding everybody in a league that's got Auburn and Arkansas and Kentucky, we are the best playing right now. They are. And Alabama with the wins they had early. They started a little bit lately, but don't be shocked and surprised to see Alabama get it rolling at the right time again. I don't think there's any doubt that Texas A&M, even with the outcome today, is going to stay in that bracket. They slid up one spot according to Joe Lenardi, who's been so accurate. And what a what a week by Buzz Williams and his guys that come from nowhere. A bunch of pit bulls. I can believe they can work themselves in. And that's a heavy loaded field out of the SEC this year. Really well done. They're gonna blow the whistle with literally about one second on the clock. Barring a shot here to keep it going. But Rick Barnes and the Tennessee Volunteers all raise their shirts. They are the SEC Tournament Champions. Their defense held A&M to a season-low 50 points, and the celebration now can begin on the court.